What's good, what's good, what's good, people? We're back again with another episode of Quality Over Quarantine. It's been going a bit mad. It's been getting a lot of love, and that's that's down to you lot, man. So thank you very much. Um, as promised, actually, no, before I even get into that, please keep hitting the like button. Please keep commenting. Please keep sharing, because that's how we're getting, we're, we're doing our thing. As promised, um, last week, I said we're going to start doing some giveaways, yeah? So we've got a little, we've got a little giveaway. Hold up one sec. My sound's going all crazy. It's absolutely live. So one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. All right, cool. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Sorry about that. Anyway, as I said, last week, yeah, we're going to have some giveaways, yeah? So this is what I'm giving away. A copy of my album. Every every day this week, yeah, I'm giving away a copy. All you need to do is... I don't know what you need to do, actually. We're going to come up with something. You've got to, like... You're going to have to come up. You might have a question. Actually, do you know what? This is my question, yeah? I want your top five... Um, Your top five... Nah, not forget top five. Top three... UK hip hop tracks all time. That's what I want. So in the comments, not in the not in the live comments, in the actual video comment, comment your top three. And I want from I want history. I don't want, I don't want you to be like, oh, this is what's popping this week. I want you to go deep into it. I'm gonna pick one at random. Whoever it is, we're gonna send a we're gonna send you a CD. So anyway, without further to do, introduce. Uh, put this away. Yeah, man. Uh, this is the in, this is the interview that you lot have been hitting me up uh, for for a little a little piece ever since the Blade interview. It's been going mad. People have been saying you know it's all good um, talking about you know UK hip hop today, but what you're forgetting is the foundations. So like they say, man, you got to go to the source in it. So we got a, we got a big one today. Introduce the one, the one they call the one they call C, <laughs> the one they call Q Rock. <laughs> Good, uh, good evening, people. Good evening. What's happening, Genesis? Oh, yeah, I'm blessed, brother. I'm blessed, man. Good, good. Um, like I was saying to you before, yeah, people have been hitting me up. I mean, just like saying, uh, basically, the 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 thought is that the, the foundations of what we call UK hip hop and rap and what's popping today, even talking about grime drill, um, it wouldn't be here without without the foundations, and a lot of um, I, you know what? See, there's two sides to this year because I feel like this is very true. But at the same time, so doing a bit of research on on um a bit of research on you and a bit of yeah. research on kind of like the history of of kind of where you come from and just the game in general. One thing I've noticed, yeah, it's kind of like the information is not that easy to get hold of, especially like no. online. It's one of them things. It's kind of like you have you either got to know or you don't know, and it seems yeah. like. There's a, a lot of people that want that want more that want the history of the game, but it's hard to get because there's only a few guys like yourself, like Blade, yeah. but even you a yeah. bit more because obviously you're you're way more current. That are actually still out here, still doing their thing. I don't know why is that. It's true. Um, a lot of the crews aren't even around anymore. Mm. Um, you know, you could, you, you know, people have probably told you about yeah, Demon Boys, mm. Hijack. Um, there's a there's a load of UK crews. And they half of them don't even talk to each other anymore, <laughs> so that's another reason why it's probably hard for you to um, to, to actually dig in and find out information. Um, there are a few people that are still around. You know, you've got your Rodney Pease, of course. You've got your Black Twang. You've got your Ties, and those guys were around from back in the day. Their foundation, so they can um, school all the youngers on what what took place in the past and how things were and everything. Yeah. So, but right now I, I see the struggle, you know, there aren't a lot of old school acts, um, that are out there that you can actually reach out to. So it is difficult. Definitely. Definitely is difficult. One thing, um, one of the things that I've also noticed as well, like the names you just mentioned, it's funny because yeah. almost like we don't even see them as like, um, or I, I may, yeah, maybe we don't give them the respect as, as pioneers, because they're still running with us, they're still yeah. bumping heads with 
the like the young dons in it. Like and it, yeah. and, and yeah. it's it's hard to look at um somebody like you, someone like Rodney P, someone like Ty, and be like, yeah. nah, they were there like way back in the day because it's funny because we, we, we say this is a it's a young man's sport, or whatever. And if you think of it yeah. in like running like running races, you man are still leading the pack. So it's like it's hard to see how how to it's hard to see 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 you in, in that light. Yeah, I, I guess you know. But it, as I said, there there were loads of crews out there. You know, my original group that I started off in called Gunshot. They were from East London. They um they paved a big way for this hardcore um rap thing that's that's going on and like taking a surge in some of the other olders that are out there. Um, but yeah, it's it's just weird. It's it's a mad one. You know, I mean, you and I obviously met through the Four Pillars thing that I run. Yeah. Um, and that's how I became. You know. I think I explained it to you then. It's it's more about um, just the learning process. Of like you, can, we can the, the elders can learn of the the youngers, and the youngers can probably learn a trick or two from the elders. I mean, you know, when when we were young, there was and you've heard this before. There was no YouTube, there was no social media. It was mm. just like you had to beg DJs. You know, there's you had DJs like Tim Westwood that wouldn't even play your record, and when he did, it was like, wow, I'm being played on like major radio yeah. station. Um, which was nice, but a lot of the times there were so many acts that got looked over. But then on the flip side of that, you had DJs like 279 um, and another DJ, Steve Wren. You had Max and Dave from Kiss FM, um, Richie Rich. All these names, some of them you've probably heard of, some yeah. of them you haven't. But these guys, you know, the guys that Westwood would overlook, these guys would make sure that they played their records on their shows. Yeah. Um, you know, back in the day, Westwood was big on American rap, massively on American rap. Now it's that everything switched and he's onto the UK side of things, but yeah. the more the drill and the people that are making lots of money. Um, it's, it's funny yeah. actually, because like speaking of, if you speak about um, Westwood, let's, let's take let's take out all the, all the contra- controversy that's going on around his name right now, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that is what it is. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, boy, I... I yeah, we're gonna, we, we, I got we, some footage yeah. of him in another country, bro. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now let me start. Like, I remember I got you still out in other countries like, yo, dad, yeah. Westwood's here. And I'm like, are you kidding? Look, there's a video. It's, I'll see. It's mad. It's, <laughs> it, it's funny, actually, because everyone who was, everyone who's kind of been around the game like, has, yeah. has these stories, has like, oh, loads of stories, like straight up, loads. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. get into, but, but, but nah, it's not what I'm getting into. There's rumors <laughs> about everybody out there. Yeah, yeah. So. But he's 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 our very fan, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it's funny yeah, because when I first heard the the first UK hip hop music I ever heard, really yeah. was from Westwood. So really um, okay, yeah, man, because um, and, and obviously, but he was a he was a figure way back in the day with um with the label and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. but um. He used to have this uh, Friday night freestyle thing where you'd have people jump on and do it, and, yeah. just, and it, then every now and then he'd throw like a a track would go on or whatever. So that's the first time I really heard like UK rap. But I want to kind of go back here. Um, yeah. How did you get into? How did you get into hip hop? Um, wow. Yeah, like because because the thing is, a lot of people don't. Um, there's a lot of bits that people don't really get. Um, I don't yeah. think people really get how big the Covent Garden. Um, uh, scene was yeah, yeah. The scene the scene was big then. I wasn't yeah. I wasn't around the Covent Garden days because I was I was from East London. So for right. me to travel into West London, my mum would have given me a beating. So yeah. I couldn't I couldn't really go there. But there were some Westwood jams I used to go to. Um, I got started in what 1983 um, okay. when I was at, like um, I don't know I don't know what the years are because the way that the school the school years work now is different. But yeah. Back then, I was like a first or second year. I was probably like eleven or twelve. Right. And um, I used to listen. I used to listen to Westwood on a regular. You know, the thing was, you'd go to school, you'd run home, you'd listen to Tim Westwood, um, and Tim Westwood played this guy called MC Westrock, who was, I think he was, I think he was a UK rapper or an American rapper that used to go over, or a UK rapper that used to go to America, or an American rapper that used to come over to the UK. Right. Anyway, I, I heard this record. Or not this record, this freestyle, this guy down on Westwood. Um, and me being a cheeky little son, I, I teethed his lyrics. And I can still remember them to this day. Like, it started <laughs> off, I'm sweet, I'm nice, I'm the very best. I took the S off Superman's chair. So, 11-year-old kid going to school and I was doing that. And then my music teacher caught on to it. And um, 
I've got a twin brother, and then me and my twin brother, my twin brother used to beatbox, and then he started rapping. Dougie Fresh came out. He started beatboxing. The school teachers let us do a concert in school with a few of us. There was, like, beatboxing and breaking was out then. So we did all that, and that's how I started. Um, that's how I initially got started. And then after that, I got older. I must have been about 16, 17. Um, in fact, no, before... Yeah, 16, 17. And I used to go to a guy called Lyndon C, who was part of um, Derek B's crew. I see, okay. Um, back in the day. Um, and I used to go to his house. He had this um, a drum machine called 808, which was the bad boy drum machine back in the day. You had an 808, you could get the bass from that. And, you know, you're a producer, yeah. so you've probably heard of that. That's, the still, boom from that's still what we use right now, man. Ain't never, nothing wow. changed. Yeah, man. 808 boom 808. Was just, it's deep. <laughs> <laughs> So I um, used to go to Lyndon's house. I used to, I was, I wasn't a bad kid, but yeah, I'd bunk off school and go to his house sometimes. We'd do beats and everything. And then I went to, um, I remember going to a freestyle challenge at um, Wormwood Scrubs Park. Right. Um, Westwood used to do these outside all day. These things were rough. Like I See. saw a man get chopped up with machetes and. Like all kinds of foolishness. The stuff yeah. that you've probably seen, you know, people bring stupid dogs to to park events and then yeah. the dog they let the dog off the leash and everyone's like, ah, tear yeah. gas. But anyway, so I got there, I had to battle, um, and I'm sure some some guys have probably heard this story. I had to battle a guy called Comanche Sly, who who's known uh, now as OWC from yeah. Hijack, and he's um, a big big influence on the garage scene is a major made one of the major boys on there anyway back then he was in a group called hijack um i'd never heard of them because i was from east london they were from south south right. and east back in them days we wouldn't talk like Jeez. no talking so anyway we we started you know we had to do this little rap battle um he won i came second and i was really shocked because i was just a little kid and like you know he won 50 pound he threw the 50 pound into the crowd Dude. I'm in for the money i mean if it, and this that was wicked what? that was an epic thing, an epic thing he did there 50 pound back then it's a lot of dough yeah. he threw it into the crowd i think his boys went mad at him when he did it he was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. um so that was that and then after that um derek b gave me his card See and said, go down to Music of Life and speak to this guy called Simon Harris. And I'm sure you probably heard of Simon Harris. Yeah. So I I go there and Derek's, Derek and Derek and Linda C were quite, they were very close to so that, you know, they were like, yeah, you know, you could be Easy Q. This is where the, the name Q Rock came from because I thought that I was going to be Derek B's rapper back in the day. Right. So um, I get there and I'm like, hi, you know, Derek told me to come to this, um, to come to your record label and talk about, rapping and he goes look you know you, we can't have you as Derek's rapper because half of his album's done Derek B's a big man I'm like this 16 7 year old <laughs> guy boy with like a squeaky voice like Michael Jackson Tito give me a tissue <laughs> it wouldn't have worked so that was that and yeah just part that passed by um after that um I used to work <laughs> flipping burgers in a home um, on Oxford Street um right next to HMV which um it's not a HMV anymore it was it's like a big I think it's like Sports Direct store now across Same. the road from the Marks and Spencers. You probably walked past it and seen it. Anyway, um, I was flipping burgers in there. I started talking to some guys from East London and we all formed, that's how Gunshot was kind of formed. They were all from East London, but we all started like flipping burgers in this place and the crew Same. started. That was it. That's how I started. Um, that's how the career, that my, my career first started. We got a record deal. And, you know, imagine that you're like, I think I was 19. And you know what it's like, your parents, and I'm sure anyone watching this or listening, you know, your parents are like, you can't do this rapping. Right there's no money in it. Like, yeah. I mean, money in it now, but back then there was no money in it. Um, and then I remember getting a record deal and saying to my mom, look, I signed a contract. And she was like, wow. And it was even better because when I was at school, I used to like, I wouldn't say I was the sharpest tool, um, I used to just, like, I was not a class clown, but I was one of the people that you'd always see in the corridors just walking, just walking in the corridors <laughs> on the of class. And I remember like one of the teachers like, you're not going to end up being anything. And then all of a sudden, that same teacher, when I got my record contract, they saw, um, they saw it. They saw the record in HMV. You know, like, I just wanted to say, I saw your record in HMV. And I'm very, that, that was really nice to see that. I and mean, then even my mum and dad were like, yeah. And from there, um, just due to creative differences, um, kind of like leaders of the new school, I guess. Um, I'm 
you know, you know me, you see me, I'm a quite a bossy person. Yeah. And the guy at Gunshot are all about the music, come all about image and like, yo, I need this fat gold chain and yeah. I need these true boots. And they were like, yo, we're not feeling that. So see. then, yeah, we went our separate ways. And then um, I, I got, I guess, um, we, we then, I then became friends with DJ Sun from a group called Hard Noise. Right. Um, who had disbanded at the time. Hard Noise were, they did a track called Untitled. If you guys, um, if anyone young is listening to this or watching this, I, I suggest you go and listen to um, Untitled by Hard Noise. That was groundbreaking. Um, they were from South London, I was from, I was from East. Um, and I remember this guy called DJ Sun from Hard Noise gave me, a, he, he said, oh, you rap? And I was like, yeah, he goes, listen, come to this record shop. And at this time, this record shop was called Mash Records. Right. Um, it was a shop called Mash down in um, Oxford Street. So he took me there, I bought this record. And when I bought this record, I took it home. And I don't know if you've ever had this, because I know what you're like. You're you're quite a confident guy. Me, I'm not that confident. But I heard these guys rap, bro. Yeah. I didn't even want to pick up the mic and say, I'm done. <laughs> Know this rap team, like yeah. seriously, these guys were so wicked. The DJs were wicked. I was like, I'm done out here. Yeah, I can't rap. I thought I was good until I heard them, and I was like, Whoa, yeah. I had anyway, that. um, <laughs> <laughs> you had that. I've had wow. that. I've, I've, I've had, had, I've had that live. Certain, I've had that live, man. There are, there are certain people in the game, even now, you know, I hear people like Ransom, Bad Bones, crazy, uh, My Stiggy, crazy. I hear you spitting bars, and I'm like. Yo, I'm too old for this dude, I'm Cassidy. You got like a reading and everything. I'm like, I'm just old, man. I'm a grown guy. I ain't got time to be reading and just knowing stuff. I'm like, the stuff that you guys put in your lips, I'm like, whoa. You know, I take my hat off to you. I would take it off now, but boy, I'm rocking that Uncle Phil. I'm a Simpson look right now, so it's not looking good. But yeah, so um, going back, so they, they made me want to give up. And then that hard noise disbanded. Um, the same DJ, DJ Sun then said to me, look, we've disbanded, you're not in gunshot, let's make a group and call it Son of Noise. And that's how Son of Noise started. Right. And the rest is pretty much history. We just, we weren't, we were known in the UK, but I think um, Europe was where we actually had a massive fan base. Um, yeah. yeah, we we literally lived in Europe. We were in Germany, Spain. And you've got to remember, this is early 90s. Mm. So we were out there just like touring and, you know, we were out there with Blade, London Posse, we yeah. were out of Gunshot, Hijack, all these UK groups. And, you know, it's it's nice because a lot of the guys that are in UK were just local. They were just known in their areas where we yeah. were known in Germany. We walked to Germany, we were like, rah. Mm. People were like, can I get autograph? But I tell you one thing that was embarrassing. Was back then, I remember I, used to, I was doing temporary work in an office for BT. Right. So I remember going... Um, <laughs> Coming off a tour, having to go into work in a suit and tie, and some of the people that were in Ger lived in Germany, they were doing like some kind of trip to London. A couple of them noticed Sweet. me, They're like, "Hey, Kirok," and I was like, "How shameful <laughs> is this?" It's like you know, imagine you're seeing Jay Z and he's talking all this yeah. big talk. Like, yeah, is this that? And all of a sudden you see him in a suit and tie. You're like, "Bro, like, I, I thought he was real." <laughs> That was embarrassing, but it's funny moment. It's a funny. It's moment. funny you say that though, because I feel like um, even even now the yeah. the path for a a UK underground rapper to make yeah. their money has always been in Europe, and yeah, yeah. and it's like nothing's really nothing's really changed. And I feel like obviously yeah. now UK UK's um, music itself is bigger. The scene the scene has changed, but yeah. it's if like you, America now. Everyone's rapping. Yeah, but like if you look at the guys who. Because it there's 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 obviously there's levels there's, there's guys who I see as like pop stars like your yeah. Stormzy's Jay Huss and them man like I I yeah. see them as them as them as like they're on a different level yeah but I feel like for the majority of us who again work real jobs on the side yeah. or even if you even if you're just you're doing this full time yeah but yeah. the majority of your money is going to be made in in Europe not in the UK oh, but, definitely but one one thing I would say to anyone out there that's doing music whether you know you have got a career whether you're starting up do not be do not be ashamed of having a daytime job 100% do not be ashamed of having a daytime job you know i'll say it now i mean right fair enough there's not a lot of money to be made you get shows you meet lots of mm. people and stuff but money wise you know 500 pounds is not really going to last you long if, no. you know at the time 500 pounds for like yeah i was work on stage cool but then it still ain't gonna pay your mortgage or your bills, bro. You still need like proper money, especially 
um, any young any young guys out there that are fathers, yeah. you've got kids and stuff. Do not rely on this thing unless you unless you've got that major contract or you're making big paper. Make sure you've got something to fall back on, and that was something that my mum always said to me as a kid. You know, you, you make sure you've got something to fall back on, mm. um, especially education. That's definitely one thing you should do is always educate yourself. So when you know our careers as performers, whatever you do, you've got a limited amount of time. Yeah. If you don't make it big, then you've got a limited amount of time. And after that, it's time to go, you know what? Shit's real right now. I need, I need to literally just still have the passion to do your music or whatever yeah. you're doing, but you need to pay your bills and you need to kind of like better yourself in life. I, I, and this is, I've seen it so many times as somebody that's quite old. I've seen rappers that are still like early 30s and they're like, or late 30s and they're like, yeah, I'm still doing it, you know? And I'm like, but bro, you look busted. Like, yeah. seriously, when are you going to actually wake up and be like, yeah, it's not working out for me? Yeah. Okay, all right, cool, cool, cool. Let, let me stop you there, yeah? Because you, you, you said a lot of stuff and it's, it's I, I love, I talk a lot, yeah? And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in my own bubble a lot and there's a lot of things that I say. <laughs> and, it's, and it's really cool to see someone else who I look up to to then say the same thing. I'm like, all right, cool. It makes sense. So I just did this um video that I'm not sure when I'm going to put it out, but it's basically it was the 10 um things that I would tell my, a younger self or up coming MC to do to yeah. succeed yeah, in the yeah, game. Yeah. And the, f- the number one yeah. thing was get a job. That was the first thing on the list. <laughs> right? Because this is the thing. This is what happened. So when I'm, when I was younger, so when, when I'm like the years between 18 um, and actually not 18, like, 18, 19, I was all right because I was on the road. I was doing my thing in it. I had way yeah. more money than I ever needed. But once I had a kid yeah. and I had to like behave myself and music was the main thing I was doing, I found money myself... In not, there we go, yes. I found myself in a situation where I wanted to... I was the rapper. Everyone knew Genesis Elijah. He's the rapper. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. New AVs all the time. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. But at the same time, I needed money. And music wasn't yeah. Music wasn't giving me money and I couldn't... Yeah. I didn't want to go and work at Tesco's or work somewhere else because I was like, nah, because yeah. people are going to see me. And I myself yeah, used to look down at people. Oh, what, man's got a real job? Nah, you're not real, really. Yeah. And yeah. it's so funny now because, again, like, I would have saved myself at least, at least 10 years, yeah? I would have saved myself at least 10 years of struggle if I had just said, yeah. oh, you know what? Let me get a job, focus on that job yeah. and do music on the side. Yeah. A lot of times we feel like, oh, because, nah, my, my, um, the, my thinking at the time was, nah, music is my everything. If I start, if I get a yeah. job, yeah, I'm not going to be in the, in the place yeah, I need to be. Real life decisions, man. That's what you got to think of. Mm, but What's more important to you? Especially, like, as you said, you're a father. Yeah. You can't, you can't take your kid to school looking all busted and everything. Or yeah. not even just that. Just like, what does your dad do? Uh, nothing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> really want, you really want your youth to be saying that about you? What does your dad do? I don't know, nothing really. Yeah, there no, we go. And then we that. got, then we have, like you just said, we have we have um, artists who are, again, late 30s, who mm-hmm. aren't, aren't in the in the best position. We This this joke has been said more times than this show now, but I'll say it again because it's super funny. What do you call an MC with no girlfriend? Homeless. And that's what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, we see a lot of guys in situations where, yeah, if they break up with their missus, yeah, they're out, on the, they're out, they're gone, yeah? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. again, it's a situation of now, nah, like, be be a uh, responsible and be and you can also be productive and it's yeah. it's cool because obviously you're I wasn't even gonna I was gonna get to this later in the interview we'll come back but I never, every time I see you yeah you're looking mm. like you know what I mean like man's really out here working looking like hard work <laughs> you know what I mean and it's like to yeah. me as a as somebody who's um like I'm I'm a, I, I love music and, and whatever yeah and music is my yeah. thing but also. I, I I always want to see myself as an entrepreneur. I always want to see myself as a business person. I always want to see you, myself. To me, you are. To me, I see that. You know, from your yeah. clothing line, the way you do, like you 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 do videos for people, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. I'm like, you are an entrepreneur. That's the way I see you. You're, you're not just a rapper. You're bigger than that. And like, but, you know, there are other people you. out there. Certain other rappers out there that, are, you know, they're not just rappers. They're doing other things as well. Yeah. Because as a rapper. You have a certain you have a certain lifespan, then someone's gonna take your yeah. damn spot. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's gonna take your damn spot. You think, you know, and I love don't get me wrong, I love all these guys, the Crep Conans, the Stormsies and everything, but there's gonna be someone else who's gonna be there's someone on their ass right now. It's yeah. like, yo, I'm taking I'm coming for the crown, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. the way it goes. 
that's the way it goes. It's a dog eat dog world. And music, the music industry is fickle. Mm. <laughs> it is. It's fickle. The amount of times someone will go, you're my favorite rapper. And then you look and you be like, you just said it to that breast. So who's yeah. your favorite rapper really? Come on now. Oh, that's, oh, that, oh, that's me, you know. I'll be saying that all the time. I'll be like, yo, who's your favorite rapper? No, no, Kalashnikov's my favorite rapper. For real? What about Chester P? Nah, Chester P, yeah, nah, he's my favorite rapper. For yeah, real, for real. That's the thing. <laughs> like, Remus, it's nah, Remus is the best. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think I'd rather someone just say, yeah, man, I, I like what you do. You know, I rate you. But it's, when they keep saying, you're my favorite, and then he's like, you're my favorite. Like, come on. It's like, like women. When women go, like, oh, you know, I've got a best friend. My best friend's blah, blah, blah. And I've got another best friend. I'm like, yo, which one is your best friend? You can only have one best friend. You've got, probably you, you've got a key homie, right? One of your true items that you go to. Yeah, yeah, you've yeah. You've got one. Yeah. The rest are kind of like, yeah, they're close, but this person knows some stuff about you that people don't know. <laughs> but girl, girls get to flip it because they'd be like, oh, no, nah, she's my best friend, but she's my cousin. Uh, all right, yeah, whatever. Or there's, or there's, this is my best friend from uni, or this is my best friend since I was like five. It's like, come on now. <laughs> anyway, so, we digress. <laughs> speaking <laughs> about the game, yeah, um, or the or yeah. the industry, how do you think? How have you been able to maintain um your status in the music industry, or not even just your status, but the fact that y- you said something earlier about a lot of people who started in this game aren't aren't yeah. in it now, um, and I can attest to people that started when I started who aren't with yeah. me right now. What is what is it? What yeah. has been the I guess the the foundation, or what is it that's kept you kind of in it? It's just the passion. I tell you, like the whole four pillars thing that I do or did until mm. club started shutting down. Mm. What happened with that was we did a show in what 2011, and we hadn't done a show for ages. And I just got on stage and I was like, I love this thing, mm. but I'm too old to be out there rapping. You know, I'm not. I'm not like Rodney P. I'm not. You know, I'm not constantly in the game. So I was like, you know, how about doing something in the background? So putting on, put on an on an event mm. where guys like yourselves and some of the old school people can come and there's no stage because you saw it, you were yeah, there. Man. In fact, I found the audio of your performance the oh, other day. Um, and there's there's no backstage. It's like you're one with the people that helped build your career. Yeah. You, and you take pictures with these people. You show them love and, you know, and thank them for their support. And that's what the whole Four Pillars thing was about. And I guess that's what really... That's that's what it is, you know. That's what kept keeps me going. Just my passion about the culture. It's not just about, you know, rapping. It's about the b boy and the b girl and the graffiti. I'm not just, I'm, you know, a lot of these guys. They're rappers, but they're not hip. They're not into hip hop. Yeah, that's the thing. Hip hop is a culture, as you know. You've heard it. Hip hop is a culture. Rap is a business. Yeah, I'm in it for the culture. Yeah. I do the shit thing for shits and giggles, really. I don't do it for the money. I don't need the money. Yeah. Not that I'm rich, but you know, I don't. I don't need the money. People, people ask me to do stuff, and half the time I do it for nothing yeah. or, or minor change. Because yeah. it's just you know, I know that we're all struggling. Yeah. Some people will try and take the piss and be like, "Yo, I want X amount for this," and I'm like, "Yo, that's not. I don't even make that at the door." So yeah. see ya. Do you know what? And then you know, go on. It's no. It's funny because so when I first when I first met you, that was for. Um, the four pillars yeah? yeah so me coming into this like again not having no history about like UK hip hop from before like my my UK hip hop history goes to uh, Black Twang 90 long time that's as far back as it yeah. went at the time yeah? yeah so I didn't I didn't really know who you were I just knew you. Yeah. so as kind of meeting you and just you were always like super humble like just and straight I said to you, up I'm not in the business of ripping people off I said look if I, I make money you get money. Yeah, but that's... I, like, you know, that's the thing. A lot of people don't do that. They'll nah. like, I'll make some money before. Nah, man. listen, you know people what? like that. I, see, I'm a, I'm a person, yeah? Like, um, there's one thing I'm, I'm, I am I pride myself on. I just kind of like yeah. getting people's vibes in it. And so yeah. you can always kind of tell when someone's vibe's a little bit off or whatever. So me and yeah. you, yeah? Vibes straight away just click mad. Like, yeah. just, I, like, I can't explain it. I'm just like, rah, nah. Man's on point straight. And so we'll turn up to the night, whatever. The vibe of the night just kind of represents you. It's just, it's just next yeah. level. Like you said, you got graph in one corner, and everyone's just there. And I, obviously, I've been to many, many, many hip hop nights, yeah. But oh, yeah, that's, you, that stands out to me as one of my favorite because the vibe was just like it was. And, yeah. and, and, and you know what? Another thing about it, yeah. It felt mad classy as well. I can't explain it. It was just, it's, it, it, <laughs> it, it, it was you, gallery, bro. But, but it was, but it's just thing, you. you. Remember when it was, yeah. The, the, the world, the world cup was on that night as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a Rodney Pizza, like, yo, 
Colin, put on the TV because we have the projector with the TV. With yeah. Band, you, know, you, have, you shot off early, but yeah, um, it's funny. But yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm just a regular dude, man. I, I don't see myself as anything special at all. I'm just a normal guy that just wants to help people. You know, if someone says, can you help me? I'll do it. As long as it's it's within my power, I'll help wherever I can. But I don't you think know, I don't I don't want to be for nothing. I'm not that kind of guy. But I don't think I don't like. Obviously, to you, it's just normal. That's how you are, yeah. But being yeah. again, being someone who's been in this game around promoters and around certain things, and you just kind of get to a level where you're just like you you see everyone in the game is like, uh, what are they trying to get this time? Um, I'm not. Even yeah, and it's like it was none of that, and and the beauty of it as well. I always say this as well, like um, with uh, with companies. You can look at um, the culture of a company by who's who's a CEO and it, and it works down. And I feel like yeah. with with everything you're doing, that always goes through it because it's just like it's it's so authentic. And yeah. and again, that goes into the music, like the the music you put out. It's just, to me, it represents um it represents the time, but also represents just the passion for hip hop. Like what why is it why is it done? Yeah. And I feel like that's that's that's, that's it's, it's a rare thing, man. Yeah, my only the only bad side about the music that I put out is that there's never a message. I hate that. I mean, I've done a couple of tracks where there's a message, but I'm just an adrenaline filled guy. I make I make music for people just to get to get amped up. Something you you play in your car even loud, or something that you're in the gym and yeah. if you're frustrated, you just play. It's like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you're never gonna hear me going, "Hey, everybody, let's hug." Just, <laughs> I'm not that dude, man. There's, there's rappers out there that do that sort of stuff. I'm not that guy. I just make aggressive music. I can't help it. It's all I know. It's all I've yeah. known since I was a kid. Maybe I need counseling or something, <laughs> but I don't know. And you know, I mean, when, and when you going hard, shit, you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I've heard you scream in the mic. I'm just like, whoa, that's why I call you PA directors. <laughs> Pity the fool. That's the, it's so funny, actually. I'm getting a, I'm getting a BA tattoo coming very soon, actually. Man. That's the next tattoo. Oh, man. Yeah, man. And for you guys who don't know, that like that's that's the way I see Genesis. I just call him <laughs> BA Varang. Like he's like BA man. He's just a big hens dude. And when he shouts in the mic, he's like, "Yo, BA, calm down, trying man. To, get on damn place." <laughs> yeah. Trying to get, I'm trying to get, trying to get them chains, man. I'm trying to get them chains. That's 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 what's, that's what's coming next, man. Um, oh, wow. Do you know what, actually? This 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 is another thing I want to speak about, which. I don't know okay. if you spoke about it before, but you're a person who's like, you you, you kind of downplay it, but you be in the gym, right? You know what I mean? When did that? When did that start? Because and and that's not a, again, when wow. it comes to UK hip hop, it's not a thing that you see a lot of people kind of push as far back as you've been pushing it. Okay, I I only started. Um, <laughs> the truth of the matter, the truth of the story is, um, the mother of my kids. Um, it was one of those things where I think she said like her ex-boyfriend was a runner and he was really big and I was like, nah, <laughs> so I just went to Argos and bought this bench and I was I'm a big LL Cool J fan. Yeah. Um, so that's how you know I, I pride myself on LL. I'm like I want to I want the chains I want the body um, and that's how it got started. But in honest in all honesty, I am like I eat the worst food on earth. Um, as I sent you that, you the picture, yeah. I showed you the sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I showed yeah. you my sweet, my sweet cupboard. This is full of popcorn and chocolate. Um, I guess I'm just, I'm just lucky. I, I and I've, I guess I'm probably like, um, what's is it? Kenya Barris, where it's like this is, it's all because of slavery. <laughs> I, I think it's that's what, my genes. I've got good muscle memory. But yeah. At the gym, anyone that knows me, they're like, oh, I, he, he doesn't really lift anything. Heavy. <laughs> I think. I, it's just I'm just one of those lucky guys, but it is nice. I think I go to the gym, what, three times a week. See. But it's it's usually just to do with just like a mental state. See, you know? okay. It's 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 not for. I mean, yeah, I do want to look good, but at the same time, it's just like it's nice to to go into the gym, work out, and you come out. It's like you're calm. You don't have to be angry. I went yeah. through that as a kid. I was like, I was, I had issues, man. Not. Yeah, I was just an angry kid. I was yeah. pleasant, but just short fuse. Just like, what, what? Uh. What was, um, what was yeah, going but... up? Because you, you grew up in East, yeah? Yeah. So it's, it's funny because I speak to a lot of people. Obviously, I'm from South, so I grew up. I speak yeah. to a lot of people, again, who grew up in South. I know a lot of people who grew up in West. Um, Obviously, the yeah. scene in West was like, Grove was, was a massive um kind of melting pot for where music was coming from. Brixton. Grove was trendy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure West London people that are watching this are going to want to kill me. But every time it's I saw truth, Grove, 
it was just like these guys are all fashionable with polka dots and stuff and dancing like kid and play. South was gully. Yeah. South was just like, yo, don't come around here. You know, it's like you come out of Brixton Station yeah. back in like, you know, early, early 90s, mid 90s. You couldn't walk out of that station and be, you'd be shook. Yeah. yeah you'd yeah, be yeah, shook. Yeah. It's different now, obviously. Yeah, yeah. East, East was, um, <laughs> East was a strange one. Um, it was cool, but we weren't, I don't know, I don't know how to put it. We, we, we've got, we had lots of talent in East London, but there wasn't a lot of, um, as far as I'm aware, there wasn't a lot of badness. The, the badness was South right. and definitely North. North London was, yeah, North, North side, man. Yeah, them, them boys, that Broadwater boys. Yeah, you didn't, back in the day, you didn't want to play with them. But you know um, what? I- but I feel like I feel like the reason why the reason why Brixton was the way it was is because we had the, we had the the Yardies come from the eighties in it so it was yeah. and and the same kind of same with West as well yeah but East was a place where East is, is was always like the firms in it so they never wanted yeah. people running around like crazy yeah. it was always kind of just yeah, yeah. kept held down so I feel like people didn't when but when East did start getting bad it just went <laughs> it got yeah. the worst yeah, East, yeah it got worse but I tell you what I I tell you what though. I actually, and a lot of people are probably going to be like, you're nuts, but I like walking into places where there's an element of like, what the fuck am I doing here? It's going to kick off. I miss See? those days in hip hop <laughs> where you'd go somewhere, you're just like, your mum man looks a bit, yeah, he looks a bit suspect, like he's going to do something. I really, I really miss that energy. I really do miss it. Now everyone's trending, hugging. Oh, hey, yeah. you know, but I, I'm from the old school. It's like, yo, like I'm gonna be in here and hold my corner. Yeah, and just yeah, everyone just stay out of my way. I, I'm not here for any trouble. But if you're gonna be stepping around me or pushing into me, then yo, I'm fisting the bread of up. It's it's, <laughs> it's it's but it's funny, yeah, because so when I when I first started doing open mics, yeah, um, yeah. And kind of just not not name on no fly or nothing, but just going into clubs, and it would always be yeah. places where either Brixton or I did a few in East as well actually, where you'd have like you might have two three gangs in one room, like yeah. in all in different corners, and you know yeah. it's you like you know it's kicking off at some point, and <laughs> that that whole attitude of uh, people just people in people that come to the rave who didn't come to rave, yeah. like there was yeah. a lot of that they element came, in there. Came to, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Who's gonna get it? And back then, it wasn't even it wasn't even guns. It's more probably more about a wet mark on your face. Yeah, 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 yeah. For real, like <laughs> always, it was a wet mark your face, your neck, or something like that. But yeah. we we got into the yeah, for real. Probably, probably yeah, it's only that. like it's, it's, it's only the pecking man, the pecking man that, that changed it all up, man. <laughs> we, <laughs> we won't even start with that. <laughs> I used to live around the corner from that place. Yeah. Woo, listen, woo, listen, on them, Woolworth Road, man. They like used to come up there, and yeah. Like when you go different. to that Bagel King. Even now, you go to Bagel King on Wharf Road. It's like I, I walk in there as, as as a man that's like close to fifty, and I'm like, "What the hell's happening here?" <laughs> oh, I got these young these young guys looking like, "Where are you from?" And I'm like, "I'm from here." What are you talking about? Where I'm from? Where are you from? Mm. I could be your dad. <laughs> I remember the first time taking my kids to Brixton, and this is again mm-hmm. not, not too long ago. Maybe what? Uh, yeah maybe seven eight years ago like taking yeah. them to Brixton and it was like again it's a day trip yeah like I had to, I had to, you know what the educational trip I had to go to jam innit I had to go to jam to do one yeah. like an interview or a video or something and, and um, my okay. wife was at work so I had to bring her with me yeah. so we come at the station oh, by the way you've got a beautiful family bro thank you bro thank you thank you've got you. a beautiful family Every, I, I love the fact that when you do your shows your beautiful wife's there yeah, I love bro, it man it, just, it makes me smile I love, the, I love the connection every time I see your Instagram account and I see the kids, I'm like, this guy has got it set. I learned it's, something. It's a really nice thing. <laughs> I learned something a while ago as well. Like, always well, bring my wife to shows because then it just like, yeah. It always goes smoothly, man. No madness can happen. Like before, it used to be like you never, you never, you, you get into bare trouble. When my wife's with me, she's gonna pick up on certain things real quick, and then yeah. we're gonna yeah, be, yeah. we're gonna be gone. But like, yeah. I, I must say, she's ride or die. She's a beautiful woman, yeah. but you can see she's, she's had you from day one. Yeah, man. And I don't even know you from day one, yeah. but I can just see. It. I'm like, yeah, this connection here is deep. <laughs> Yeah, deep, yeah, yeah. Because I think like she's seen, she's seen the come up as well. She's seen like yeah. from. The, she's been there from playing in Manchester like with three guess, people yeah. and playing in front in Wembley in front of twelve thousand. So she's seen like yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. the whole thing, man. But yeah, taking my kids to Brixton and then we we gone to like the, the KFC and um, a fight kicks off 
And they're like looking around like, what? I'm like, this is normal, man. Just chill. This, this, is, is, yeah, this, this, is, this is this is Ignore nothing. Them. This is nothing. <laughs> like, but when we were, I feel another thing as well, like when I was younger, being around these yeah. areas and, and seeing the madness that went on, even like you talking about the um in the clubs and the fights and whatever, the stabbings yeah. and, and shootings, or whatever, it was never like it sounds mad, but it was re- it was really normal. And I feel like yeah. now, if that had happened now, like clubs get shut down, that's your gone. Like, what, bro, like even the bouncers back in the day, we there used to be um, a group of bouncers called Rat Security. They were just hardcore. They would, yo, they thump you up. Yep. No, wouldn't give two f's about it. They'd thump you up. Um, yeah, but it, I miss I miss the old days. Um, I, but I enjoy the, <laughs> I, I enjoy what's happening now. But the gulliness of the old days um, is what is what I used to just. I used to love it, just going to places and you're just like, oh, oh, this doesn't look too good. What but do you, yeah. do you feel like, so, because this is kind of um, indicative of our society as a whole. Um, if you look at, everyone nowadays is like super offended of, about everything, right? So everyone's really thin skinned yeah. and you, there's yeah. a lot of stuff you can't get away with. And I, yeah. I, I, to me, I kind of feel like there's, um, there's good, it's a double, it's a double-edged sword. There's good sides and bad sides. Um, one yeah. of the things when I first started um, when I first started rapping, so mm-hmm. or when I first started getting into rap, especially like people was rapping on the block, especially Brixton times, like you couldn't just you couldn't like anybody couldn't just be in that in that cipher. Anyone could yeah. just be in that in that group. Any anybody yeah, yeah, yeah. you couldn't even with like the, the gold and the jewelry, you couldn't wear like you couldn't be some. You, if you weren't someone, you couldn't just be wearing jewelry yeah. like and walking yeah, around yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. nothing. And I feel yeah. like some some of those elements have kind of like watered down what hip hop is a little bit or just what what um fringe culture is how do you feel about it yeah it's pretty much just, i mean yeah i'm a man that doesn't you know if, if it's gonna happen it's gonna happen um with all the jewelry and stuff i'm just like yeah if it's gonna get taken it's gonna get taken as long as i'm okay with it, <laughs> sorry. yeah it's insured bro, you take it. i'll get another one and put in a claim for even more money <laughs> I'll buy myself another nice new car but um yeah, it's a it's a strange one. Um, the way that people are and the way that things are now, they, you know, everyone is a little bit thin skinned. You have to watch what you say and what you do, mm. um, which is that's not what hip hop was about. It's mm. about expressing yourself to yeah. the fullest. You just go out there, you just say what you want to say, and regardless. I mean, you look Public Enemy when they came out, they were just saying what they wanted to say, mm. and then all of a sudden, what they like everyone loves them, black and white. All races love Public Enemy, but their message in, originally was about black people and yeah. unifying. Mm. It wasn't about people; it was more about black people. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's 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 a strange one. That is a, that is a real strange one to me. I don't really get involved in that sort of yeah. stuff. I just I keep my mouth shut. Yeah. I don't. You know, lots of people go on Instagram and post their views. If you look at my Instagram, I don't post nothing. I don't post no views. You know, right now with this COVID-19 and everyone's mm. got, oh, mate, it's 5G or is this? I'm yeah. like, seriously? Yeah. We're dying. That's all I <laughs> yeah. know. People are dying. I don't give two shits. <laughs> don't, like, I've had, I've had to like, block people on WhatsApp where they're coming. Oh, what are you saying, man? Just, here's a link to this video. I'm like, yeah, what? Love it. Please, love just... Let me just get through this lockdown situation because yeah. it's real tough right now. <laughs> how have you been? How have you been finding the lockdown? How's it? How's it affected? Because I was, I was thinking. Um, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. I yeah. walk from home seems, every day, seems, seems. so I, like this is nothing. This is water for ducks. Back. Right. It's just that I can't. I I can't go and see people. Like my grandson's going to be one this Thursday, and I'm like, I can't even see him. I just yeah. have to like do video calls. But yeah. yeah, I just I just chill, man. I'm just I. I it doesn't. I just want it to be over. But yeah. It's not going to be over. And um, what's what's interesting is going to be the new normal. Mm. What is that going to look like? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I, I feel for anyone that's a performer that has had their gigs cancelled and their their, you know, especially money wise. I don't know mm. how these people are going to survive. Mm. Um, it's it's real difficult. It's really really difficult. Some some people are smart and they they put their money aside, but there are some that just get their money to spend it and then now this has happened they haven't got that rainy day money yeah yeah it's a it's it, it will be interesting to see um i was talking to um uh label um well um, a management uh production company the other day so they were talking about 
what's going to happen going forward with live performances um, being done remotely. So, like, how do you how do you do that and how do you monetize that? Because what you've seen is a lot of people yeah, be, been going true. live. So you're going yeah. live. You're you're performing. You're getting thousands mm. of people watching. Where's the money? Yeah. Like so, it's it's, it's like the next step is well. It's, yeah, but it's probably gonna be like Sky and all that. You're just gonna have to pay a subscription, not a subscription, but you you won't be able to get in until you've paid a certain amount of money. Yeah, yeah. And it's cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I mean, where would you perform? I mean, Tory Lanez did it the other day, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And I, was, I found that a bit strange. I was like, oh, there's no crowd. Nah. This is really. Good. You know, <laughs> do you know who killed it? Um, what's his name? Um, Travis Scott. So he did a performance on yeah, he's on big the, in the game, like. But he did it so mad. he moved with um with Fortnite, the computer game, yeah. So he right. did a virtual performance in Fortnite and had like No way. Yeah, so everyone who's on Fortnite is all watching like him doing his thing. So I was oh, like, wow. that is crazy. That's a that's to me, that's like that's... super understanding. And you know we got a bag from them as well, so like yeah. he's getting paid from them. So I feel like if if, if artists can figure out ways of of monetizing yeah, that's, that's the major eyes what about the people you know we're not just talking about um rappers there are other people that do other other sorts of performances yeah, that yeah. how are these people going to make their money yeah like yeah. you know it's 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 going to be tough yeah it's going to be tough it's it, some of the some of the careers may end i hope it doesn't but yeah. realistically it could it what could. do you do man what do you yeah. do and that's why i always have that backup plan you know, mm. it's nice being out there, being popular on the road or being popular in a certain scene, but without without any cash, it's going to be a struggle, man. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a struggle. I've always been a person, I'm always like a, a multiple revenue stream type of person. Um, yeah. And I'm always someone who's like looking, again, to, this hasn't this hasn't affected me one little bit um, wow. because of just the way I work like I've always yeah. I don't I don't leave my house so and I haven't done I haven't <laughs> I like that's just me in it I haven't done shows for almost two years only because I wanted them to be, yeah man I wanted them to be a certain a certain way in it I wanted to do concerts yeah. Um, I did. I didn't want to do club nights. So the only shows that I've done. You did a big. You did a big concert. I'm sure I saw a post where you did a massive concert. I did. Nah, man. You, you nah. performed. You performed somewhere with somebody. I did. I've done a few. That was a little while ago. Did like the Wembley thing. Yeah. But that was. A, that was. That yeah, was. That was I think, yeah, that's a while ago, man. But like the yeah, last two. Good. Yeah, man. It's, you yeah. said like it's nothing. Oh, you Wembley? <laughs> Shit. I do chip shop. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not like Wembley. Like, I do Wembley. I'm like, yeah, man, I did Wembley. But do you know what? But to, to me, I'm just like, there's there's ways I want to do things. And it's funny as well, because you see how how your night was set up, the vibe. To yeah. me, it yeah. has to be that vibe. But I don't want it. I, I don't want to do club nights anymore, that kind of stuff. So yeah. for me, I've just been, I've kind of been off, off that. Um, going yeah. forward, talking about, so as far as musically, you've all, you've you, you yeah. kind of been quite consistent with music, putting out music and, um, or just be. I think I could. I wouldn't say consistent putting out music. I mean, I did that R.I.P. thing um, with DJ Supreme. That was done like four years ago. We were meant to do a follow up, but it never took place. But we are Son of Noise mm. um, are doing an EP now. Um, so it, it, it's gonna. It's on the same sort of level as R.I.P. Um, it's it's like proper, not proper hip hop, but you know what is hip hop now? There's so many different versions of it, mm. but it's it's just. Yeah, it's got every all the elements scratching, yeah. heavy beats, lyrics that just that are saying, "I'm gonna tear your head off and shit down your neck." That's <laughs> that type of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's what we're working on at the moment. We, it would have been done by now, but studios are locked off. Yeah. Um, so it's been put back. I reckon probably I don't know end of summer you'll hear some sound of noise stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, but I don't know what's gonna happen after that. Yeah. You know, as I said, I don't want to be like this guy that's just suddenly come back onto the scene and like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to blow it. I just want to do this for the people that loved RIP, the mm. people that like kind of noise and that sort of music. And then, you know, I'm old. I'll probably just fade into the shadows and just do the events. I really want to get back onto the four pillars thing. I need to so, find a venue that will allow us to do the graffiti. Yeah. And that, that was the main thing about those events was the graffiti. That was, that's what gave it the edge on any other event. And then also the fact that we did British MCs, we didn't really do American MCs. It was like literally, yeah, I'd approach guys like you, Jest, Michael Parkinson, um, Dirty Goods. Mm. I mean, the only one that I was shocked at was when Cormega sent me a message saying, how do I get involved Seen. in this new thing? <laughs> and then 
that was that was nice. That's that was crazy. really good. You know, we've had Black Twang. Oh, we've had so many people doing those things, and I'm so grateful to everyone that um, came through and, and did it for either minor change or for nothing. You know, for the love of it, and that's what I want to get back into doing. Yeah. I can't rap for the rest of my days. I ain't got nothing to say. There's only so many, <laughs> so, there's only so many different ways you can tell somebody how you're going to kill him or how bad you are. <laughs> How many references to guns that you actually don't shoot? Yeah. You know, I'm being, I'm being realistic. Everyone's like, you talk about guns. I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's a reference to my lyrics. It's not like yeah, I'm holding yeah, yeah. a gun. If you, if you hear me say something about I'm holding a, you know, five old caliber or something or the bullets of five old caliber, I'm like, that's that's just a reference to yeah. the words that are coming out of my mouth. I'm not talking about guns. It's, well, I am, but it's like it's just a reference to my rhymes, and that's it. You know, it's it's entertainment. I feel like I don't get caught up in it. They should. I feel like people should. You, you got to know that. You got to know. Again, this this there's, there's a kind of um a, a argument that comes up a lot when you're dealing with people outside of the culture who speak on the culture, and it's like there's yeah. a miscommunication. And I feel like there comes a point where nah, this is our thing, innit? I don't explain nothing to nobody. Like, this is our thing. If you don't yeah. get it, you don't get it. It's, it is what yeah. it is, what it is. I have these conversations with um, Ransom Badbones on, on a regular occasion. I'm like, because his lyrics are so deep. Yeah. Like, his new album, I'm like, bro, you need to explain to people. He's like, I ain't explaining shit. No. Nah. <laughs> it's like, it's either you, they get it or they don't. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And that's one person that I'd love to see rise. Like he's so talented, like mm. lyrically talented. I really back that guy. He's, he's good. He's very, very good. He's from. Um, but there are lo- go on. No, I was gonna say like I feel like the the the, the task force family here. Yeah? yeah. The the one thing that they they have is there's so much talent here. Yeah? It's like they all come from this same. I can't even explain it, man. It's like they just come from this. It's not even Earth, man. This planet. Struggled. All of them came from a kind of struggle. Bro, but but they, I, I always feel like this, this, like we didn't yeah, have yeah, shit yeah, as yeah, kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like they were proper, proper, proper council estate. Mm. Like yo, like you know, you look at them as as a someone like me. I drive past and I'd be like, "Run, man, look mush around here." But them guys now, mm. talented as hell, man. Like, I'll crazy. take my hat off to them all. All of the task force guys. It's a, it's a different planet, but I feel like in this day and age, yeah, where you you kind of have to have that. What's your, where's your you, where's your 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 what they say your your um public facing your your yeah like where's that side of you where's your your PR side and you I feel need, like you do need to have that side yeah. though, sometimes and I, none I of I them are on I, that they're just they they're just like yeah they they real they're super they're real more like, followers. yeah but they, but then their following would be even bigger if they were like yeah. you know out there just talking mm. i mean like chess is a is an educated brother man yeah. they're all educated yeah, yeah, yeah. um in you know i think obviously they they do lots of reading they know what they're talking about and it's just it's not just those guys there are so many rappers that yeah. are educated but my thing is you need to actually let people understand who you are yeah and like show your personality whether mm. it's a bad side or you know if, if you're just a moody git then mm. that's you that's that's who you are yeah but if you're a jovial type person People warm to you. Yeah. Don't yeah. sit there giving this hardcore, you know, it's it's imagine if I was here now and all these all this stuff that you see me doing on on the, all these records and rapping about killing a man and I, and I sat there like, yo, I'm really bad. I'm like, I'm not that guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There are people that are like it, but then real gangsters are not really jumping on records. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah you have got some of them out mm. there, but not real gangsters are jumping on records going, Yeah, well, I'm bad man still. Yeah. Really. <laughs> are you on record? Because like <laughs> Confessions on whack half <laughs> Yeah, I'm also shooting up. Why are you talking about that? We know you do it, but don't go on record talking about it. That's dumb. <laughs> Plain dumb. I don't get it. I love to listen to it, but sometimes I'm like, this guy just like <clears throat> just confess to doing something. But do you know what though? Okay. Do you know what though? See, this is the thing here. Yeah. Again, it's coming from like really understanding um understanding a culture. And understanding what goes on behind the scenes, and I've seen this a lot. A lot has happened yeah. with, with with younger UK artists. So, um, okay. not with not, not understanding that what's what's being said. So a lot of the Americans will do okay. things and say things, and the UK guys will just go see it, take it as gospel, and go rah. Well, I'd do that anyway. Yeah. So they'll rap about it as well. And there was a guy yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember the dude's name, but he was saying he went over to America to do a track with these American guys, um, big American yeah. guys who um, they got names or whatever, and um, talk about their jewels and whatever. And so he said when I went out there I packed all my like des- I had designer clothes for every day I had jewels for every day right so I've gone out there now what? to meet these men and these men are bummy like you know what I mean like so these men like, 
Like, yo, it's like Instagram chicks. Yeah. <laughs> so like, half of them are like, yeah, it's just like, yo, you you live like a bum, really? That's, this I'm, is how you, you might have nice clothes, but what's your yard look like? Yeah. So that's, but that's the thing. <laughs> so the house, the roof over my head look nice. Than yeah. anything else. But that's and that's and that's the difference though. I feel like because the, because of the UK how we are as well, because the UK is so small, like there's, yeah. there's people talk about things and you can easily see, right, is that, is man really about that? So yeah. there's, there's there's never that in America you can be you are never gonna meet the people, innit? So they're talking about, yeah, yeah. I got I got twenty racks rear rear, then our yeah, UK yeah, boys go yeah, over really? there to go talk to them and it's like Nah, like I, 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 bought, I bought, like you know what I mean. Man was talking about, yeah, I, I, I had fifty k with me to spend that week. These men were broke out there, like, and I was like, mm-hmm. what? Like you let anyone? That's, that's the thing. Stay in your lane. That's you know. Yeah. But me personally, I wouldn't be going to America wearing any jewelry like that. I'll just go nice and humble. <laughs> I'm not taking any chances. Like I went to Jamaica in December. I was there with nothing, just red, gold, and green. Everything. <laughs> that was it. They knew I was a tourist. <laughs> but again, again, I feel like that come that kind of comes with maturity and really understanding, like this idea no, I'm of really immature sometimes. But, I do yeah, some but, really dumb things. But I, I used to rock, <laughs> I used to rock these like my neck was at one point. I'm sure there was. I think I remember walking to the chip shop and even I seen these boys were looking at me like, who is this dude with this fat, this big jewelry? Um, I had, I think, gram wise, it must have been about 27 grams worth of hmm. gold or t- ounces. 27 ounces worth of gold around my neck. I walked into the tip shop and performed. I was hosting. I wasn't even performing. I was just hosting. And I was like, it just got to the point where even one of my, my closest my closest guy, um, DJ Madder from Santa Noise, he was like, yo, bro, you need to be careful. Man. <laughs> uh, I used to, at the time, I was driving a convertible as well. And I remember stopping it. <laughs> I was wearing it down Oxford Street one day. And these youths just ran up to the car. And they were like pleasant youths. But yeah. I was just thinking, man, that could have turned out bad if they weren't. They could have snatched it. They could have just snatched that jewelry yeah. and just said, "Yeah, later, mate." But yeah, you got to be smart. But yeah, it's, you know, I, I think as I'm getting older, you learn that sometimes it's not even about how much you spend on clothing. Mm. This which is really contradictory coming from me because I spend shitloads. I'm like Kenya Barris from Black as Fuck. I just spend. I just, I just. I saw that show and I was like, "This this dude is me." me. <laughs> but then it's not. It's not about how much you spend. It's like how you wear it. You can go to Primark yeah, yeah, and buy yeah. something to make it look nice. Like shit. Yeah. I prefer people like that. Actually, see, I'm but like, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm a merch man. You don't see anything. Anything I'm wearing. It's either, it unclosed, man. It's either mine. Please, I don't want one of them t-shirts. <laughs> I, got, I got as soon as we as soon as it's locked on over, man. I got I got stuff. I'm, I'm oh, back. To, I'm back to work. I'm I'm giving you. I'm sending you my address. I'm Just back, post it. I'm back to work. I'm back to work. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm a merch guy. I buy a lot of people's merch. Like that's that's my thing. That's yeah, I do. Money. I do, and I don't ask. Yeah, yeah, nah, I buy. Just buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I buy. I'm like, you know what? No, no. no. As yeah. soon as you free, I'm like, listen. Yeah. Let me buy it. I've got the money. I know that, you know, I know how much it costs to make a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. I make t-shirts, but I'm like, look, if that's what it is, that's yeah. what it is. If I if I can help promote your brand, then I'll do it. Look, if it's if I like it, then yeah, yeah. I'll do it. I like being in I, I like did. being in that position. I, I feel like, especially because um I remember it wasn't very it wasn't that long ago where I was I was broke, man. And those yeah. little those little t shirts that I was selling like meant something yeah. to me. Like I needed that, I needed that money. So now when I see yeah. people doing their thing, I'm like, yo, let me just support because I, I understand yeah, that even feeling. Music. Even music, when someone like, you know, someone says, oh, you can buy it on Bandcamp. I'm like, cool, yeah, send me the link. Yeah. I'm on Bandcamp, I bought it and I'll pay a little extra. It may yeah. not be lots, but you know, I'm I'm buying it. I'm not going to be like, can you send it for free? Yeah. No, because I, I you know, it's, I, I don't, wouldn't take offense Well, I, Slightly, when if someone says, "Could you send it to me for nothing?" I'll be like, "Seriously, uh, how am I meant to keep doing this this project yeah. if people keep asking it? Especially, you know, you're known in the game. There's lots of other rappers known in the game, and everyone's going, can you give me, give me something for free?' Like, you can't. You're gonna have to. It's either cost price or yeah. buy, it, or you know, or don't buy it. But you, you, uh, and you, as I said, you've been in the game long enough. You know who the real ones are. Yeah, yeah, man. It, it, th- do we, we um do you know what I want to get into um I guess we're kind of a little bit out of time here but okay. once this lockdown's over I said it every every episode we we got um a studio ready to go we're gonna have people down um I've also got another thing that I wanted to um 
wanted to do with, with tour stories. I know you got a lot of tour stories. Oh my god! Oh my <laughs> right? days! Blade, Blade was like, nah, Ooh. I ain't doing it, man. He go, Blade was like, nah, there's too many, there's too many names involved. I, 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 yeah, there's, there's, it's not even that. I, I've been on tour with Blade. I remember upsetting Blade. One, one of the tours I upset Blade. <laughs> See I there? Blade. I did. I did something, and uh, the, ne- the next day I said something to Blade, and he was like, "It was not good. It wasn't good. He didn't take it too well." But so, I may, I may say some, I may not. I yeah. don't know, man. See that'd be, see that'd be a good one. So we could get both sides of that one. That'd be a good one to go with. I say, uh, yeah, yeah, you might have to, might have <laughs> to do that, man. Say, Blade would probably say he doesn't remember, but I remember it. Like it when I said something to him about what happened the previous night, he was like. You motherfucker! <laughs> he was not happy. Yeah, not happy. I might, I might, I might jog his, I might jog his memory, man. We might do that, man. But yeah, <laughs> he, like, he probably won't remember. <laughs> but yeah, um. Also, I want to talk to you about um. So in the future, because yeah. we've had we've had like a really um a lot like again a lot of people are like like me that don't really know the history of of, of UK hip hop. So we're what we're going to do is we're going to put together a documentary. So we're gonna, oh, be, wow. yeah, man, we're gonna do that um, because I think I feel like there's such a wealth of knowledge. Um, there is, and, and there's loads of crews out there mm. that you probably haven't even spoken to. Yeah, you know, have you spoken to my old, my old crew, Gunshot? Nah, nah. You see, um, if you, yeah, um, he's a good person to interview. Um, the guy called Mercury, he's the front man of the group now. Um, the rest of them are just like. Doing their own, you, the real life kicks in and they're yeah. doing everything. But Mercury is is a guy that you should hit up. Um, you know, you got the likes of people like MC Mello, who's there from the Covent Garden days. Yeah. You may even want to speak to people like John Z D, who's who's yeah. been in the game long enough. He started yeah. off as a he's, he was a he's a dancer, he's a rapper. Um, yeah, there's yeah. there's loads of people, but you know, you've got my number. You could just just yeah, man. call me up and then just say, Cole, who who should I get on the show? Because I got if you got any numbers, I got pulled up by a Comanche Slayer one time on Oxford Street. Yeah. And he was, a, oh, yeah. he was a Oh, because he used to do the CDs and stuff. Yeah, but I don't think he was even selling CDs at that, at that time, man. But I was I was there okay. and I was on the way to one extra. And um yeah. he uh we got we start we got chatting or whatever, and he was just like, Yeah, yeah man, you lot don't know. And he was just, he was he was going on yeah. like you lot don't know about yeah, yeah. where you lot come from, you don't know. And I was just like <laughs> no, I was like I was just like, You you're right, man. You ain't gonna get an argument from me. <laughs> I just yeah, I just that's... I don't know. Bro, it's literally, and I keep, I've said it a thousand times, it's literally like you're speaking to, uh, it's like somebody doing an interview with Sean Paul and saying, who are your influences? And he doesn't mention Bob Marley, Peter Tosh. He's just like, then you did not do your research. Yeah. Yes, you have Rodney P. Yes, you have Black Twang. Yes, you have Ty, these guys are still out there yeah. constantly doing their thing. But there are a lot of crews out there that were still paving the way um, like myself, they were breaking down doors. You've got like crews like Cash Crew, Mighty Ethnics. You've got Silver Bullet, who was in the charts. Yeah. Um, there are so many, so yeah. many names, but you know they just they get forgotten. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of them probably deserve it. Some of them don't. I don't know. Yeah. But um, yeah, there, there, there's there's a lot of MCs out there that paved the way. I mean, you should talk to that Cookie Crew. Yeah. Yeah. Cookie Crew, uh, female female group. They were they were wicked. They still are wicked. You've got um, another group that were called the She Rockers. One of them um, did a I don't think became a, a singer called or a rapper a stroke singer called Betty Boo, who's a big songwriter. Um, like yeah, that's another thing. Like you know, I always say to people, you don't always have to be the front man. Mm. These guys behind the scenes are making more paper than the people at the front. Hundred percent. You think Tina Turner's making money? What? Who do you think's writing Tina Turner's songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's this old lady sitting down by a piano going, mm, she's <laughs> making dough yeah. and laughing at Tina Turner like, yeah, you could be the front person, but me in the back, I yeah. don't need to show my face. But that's the lady that you're going to see in a big car. Why is that lady being show for doing around? Who the hell is yeah. she? She's that songwriter. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think, yeah, because I've, like you've, you mentioned it before, there's a lot of... Um, UK rappers who are pioneers in the game. And obviously, yeah, life does get in the way. But then it, it, yeah. there's also like, um, that's why I want to talk to Comanche Sly as well, actually, because I think I saw him arguing with Rodney P one time online about Saturn. I and always arguing. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> sometimes I feel like, are you, do, you, do you feel like there's an element of a lot of guys in the scene kind of hurting their positions by just not, not playing the role yeah, that should be played? 
Or... Well, there's, there's that, and there's some of them that are just bitter and twisted about not being recognised. Mm. You know, I used, to, I used, to, I didn't used to get like that, but there was so many times where I'd be at Oxford Street when the whole CD thing was out, and people would be like, "Yo, bro, you into UK rap?" Yeah. <laughs> I used to just laugh. Yeah. I'd be like. That's probably one of my it boys. Sounds, it sounds really big headed. Yeah, yeah. No, maybe. I, I, it sounds I, I, really big headed, but I'll be like, bro, I am UK yeah. rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am UK rap. What do you know about UK rap? I'm like, no, you tell me what you know about UK yeah. rap. Then they mention names, and I'm like, how old are you, young man? And they'll be like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I'm way before yeah. your time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but there are a lot of people that are caught up in their feelings about things. Mm. Some of them haven't done, made a move in the industry for like 20 years, and they're like, yo, but I still want mine. I'm like, yeah. Nah. I was having a conversation with Blade last night and we're just like this, you know what, it's quite it's quite comical because as big people now, we're just like, we had our time. I'm not even yeah. trying to make, I'm not even trying to make a comeback. I'm not even trying to be famous and be like, yo, check me out. I'm just like, I had my time. This is for shits and giggles right now. But I this, feel the same. I feel the same now. Yeah. Like, I feel like, because it's funny as well, because people will hit me up and be like, oh, yeah, nah, man, you're better than Storms. You're better. I'm like, I don't even care, man. Like, uh, or <laughs> you should have been, you should have been bigger. And it's like, yeah, maybe, but I made my decisions in it. Like, I did what I yeah. did, and even now, it's like, ah, oh, now nah, what you need to do, yeah, what you need to do to go viral is, di- bro, please drop me out bro, with that, please. Your greatest achievement is that beautiful family you've got. Yeah, like the last, <laughs> the last bro, thing I want to say. That's it. Yeah, the last thing I want to say, it, but like, it's yeah, it, it, like... it, it's got to a point now where I feel like. Yeah, I, I'm. It is. It's for shits and giggles. This. This is just a yeah. bonus. I'm, I'm having. I'm having fun with this. And yeah. let me have my fun, Literally. please. And you yeah. lot, go That's kill like, it. Like, go kill it. Yeah. Like, do do your thing. Yeah. But don't worry about me. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. That's that's that's. I guess that's the saying. I'm good. But I'm good. I will say this though. Okay, so this is this is the problem though. This is the problem. See, with with people like us, um, yeah. people like Rodney P, Black Twang. A lot of guys can comfortably never do music again and be fine, yeah? So yeah, yeah. you've almost got no... The, the, you're never going to be better because it's like, you're good. But there are a lot of yeah. guys who didn't get what they should have got when they were supposed to get it yeah. and still haven't got it now and are still trying to figure out a way to try and get it. So they're, they're the ones that always come across bitter because they're still, they're still trying to... like. They're still trying to be good. They're still trying to get good. It, so it frustrates me when people. It's nice to be really proud about your project, but one thing that frustrates me about a lot of artists when they go, "Your Martin's gonna blow up. It's the best thing you've ever heard." I'm like, how many of you guys are saying the same shit? Every, every... Why don't you be humble? Be like, <laughs> just, just, just say something like, "Just finish the album. It's gonna be nice. Yeah. Like, I hope you guys enjoy it." Everyone's like, yeah, my team's going to blow up. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. And then the next day, somebody else is going to release something that's going to blow up and it's going to shade you. It's going to throw some shade on yours. So just yeah. calm your little self down and just be humble about it. Be yeah. like, guys, I've just finished my album. I hope you enjoy it. You know, it took a long time. I put my heart and soul in it. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. Not this, yeah, you know what? This track was produced by Rete and it's going to be fire. I'm like, really? <laughs> Okay, keep talking. <laughs> I got I got in trouble one time. Yeah, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you go through. But I'm I'm gonna tell you I got in trouble one oh, time cool, because as long as you don't as long as you don't go over East End this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's they're still going. Yeah, I thought I thought Corona shut that yeah. down. They're still. Oh man, they've they got a couple of episodes. Bro. Um, that's how boring I live. I'm so rock and roll. I want Hollyoaks, EastEnders. Anyone who knows me will tell you, don't phone him like half past six because he's watching Hollyoaks. I'm just a junk. I just watch nonsense on oh, TV. Oh, wow. Anyway, go on. Yeah, right, okay. I can't cuss. My, I can't cuss my wife for watching Hollyoaks anymore, man. I got to tell what? her to be watching. Now, Hollyoaks. We need to talk. We need to watch you talking about. Yeah, did you see that? Did you watch Hollyoaks last night? Oh yeah, my days! Gonna be lousy. <laughs> I'm a realist, man. I'm not going to sit here like, oh, what? Yeah. yeah. I was watching documentaries. Watch some shit TV, yeah, bro. So- See that's me. All I watch is documentaries on YouTube. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so I, someone, someone had had um, said something about yeah, man. I'm I'm making. I'm just in this music thing to make my money and boom, boom, boom. And I just made a comment like, yo, it ain't gonna go that way. And they got really <laughs> upset. Like they got really upset about you it. Shattered their dreams. Yeah, bro, but like, crushed. but I didn't. But to, real. to me though, it's never like. It's never like, yeah, I'm, I'm never the kind of person to say, yeah, do you know what? It's not going to do that. But I'm always a, the person to say, it, it, it probably won't do that just because of the way most of us go. But at the same time, if you just stay consistent and stay in your lane, there's, there's a lot of things you're going to yeah. get from that. But it's, it's almost yeah. like a lot of people don't want to hear that. They want to hear, nah, once my single drops here, yeah, I'm going to blow, I'm going to be rich and famous. No. And no, 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 I've, no. See, the thing is, money's going to come, it's going to come. Mm. You just need to, you know, you, you just need to take it step by step. 
If you're in it, if you're if if your initial focus is money, get the fuck out. Mm. That's it. Just like literally, be about your music. Be and, and it's not just about, as I said, rappers. This goes to dancers. Any yeah. any industry. You've got to be passionate about what you're doing. And if the money comes, it comes. If it doesn't, then you've just got to make that decision to say, this isn't working out. It's time for me to just still have the passion, but try a different avenue and do something else. Well, man, we're, 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 it's always um, good to kind of get that that knowledge from someone who's done it. Um, <laughs> a verified, verified career that spans other careers and decades. Well, no, mine, yeah. mine goes, what, how old is it? 30 odd years? I'd say, God, even more than that. See, Jesus. <laughs> and, I, I, and there's people in it, be, how long have you been rapping for? Yeah, I've been rapping for like nine, eight, eight months, man. And you know, I'm just, I'm, oh, shut up, man. Like, yeah, you, go, you know what I mean? <laughs> so you're getting chill. to that age now where you're like, what? I'm like, bro, chill, bro, come on, man. You got, you, got, you got 10 years to go, bro, before you even, yeah, even, even you can talk about you even loosen up. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> But yeah, man. you're still breaking, you know, like the engines. Yeah. Oh, you ain't even broken nah. in, you're still on your first thousand miles. <laughs> 100%, man. <laughs> but it's, 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 a, it's a blessing to be able to even just to tap into your knowledge, man. Um, like yeah, I said, I'm a, for having I'm a student, I'm a student of the game, or I try to be a student of the game. You all um, you, you all you've always, you've always been super. Um, accommodating with with every everything, man. Like you know what I mean. And like I said, from the first time we met, it's just been it's been a click straight up. You know what I mean. One of them ones. Ooh, if you call me and you're like, "Yo, I'm I'm moving house. Come and grab your couch." I'm like, "Yeah, cool. I'm there." Like it's 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 that level, man. So it's, that, it's one of them. Levels, yeah, a hundred percent, man. We must have been we must have been friends in a past life or something. Like <laughs> when we were fish. Or yeah, man, man. For real. <laughs> Where we were kings. Like I had one yeah. land, you had the other one. You know what I mean? But <laughs> nah, it's it's it's, but it's no. nothing but um, blessings, man. So thank you for coming through. Thank Thanks I for having me. Thanks for having me. More than welcome. I know the people been been asking for this. I know they're appreciating it. I'm seeing the comments up on the side. Actually, let me see the, see the comments. Let me see who's in a place. Who's in a place. Big up Yemasi. Uh, big up one like uh, who's there? Warren. Oh, big you up. Big up Tiz. Um, yeah, man. Thank you, everybody, man. Keep sharing these. We're gonna keep it moving. Um, so yeah, man. But yeah, thank you so much for for coming on. Um, just stay on the line. I'm gonna say goodbye to these people. And I'll say goodbye to you after. Let me just switch All this right. up and say goodbye to you, look. Um, yeah. So you look. The competition was. Your three top UK rap hip hop songs of all time. You put them in the comments. I'm gonna choose one of you, and you're gonna get the album. I'll sign it. You know what I mean? Cause I'm I'm good like that, and send it off to you. And we're gonna do that every single day. Every single day we're gonna be giving something away. It might get to a point where we run out of things to give away, and, and I'll just say, "What's your cash up, man?" And we just send you like I don't know, twenty pound or something. You get me? One of them ones. But um, big you up. Thank you for the support. It's appreciated. Um, and we'll be back uh, tomorrow with another guest. I'll let you know who that is later. You know what I mean? Keep some suspense out there. But thank you very much, guys. Peace and love. Stay blessed. Sit, stay safe. Love to you. Love to your families.